I'm very excited to welcome our next guest to the show. Susan Gerbic is co-founder of Monterey County Skeptics. She's a regular contributor to Skepticality and the Skeptical Inquirer, a frequent speaker at skeptical conferences, and the leader of the Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia project. And I know that all the stuff I just said is true because I read it on Wikipedia. And if there's any page on Wikipedia I feel like I can trust, it's hers. So, Susan, welcome to The Scathing Atheist. Hello there. So, tell us in a nutshell, what is the Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia project? Okay, well, we are a volunteer group of people who are bent on making sure that the Wikipedia pages concerning scientific skepticism, pseudoscience, the paranormal, that kind of thing, are all in terrific shape because we know that that's where the majority of humankind um, goes to to get their information. Mm -hmm. If they don't go there, we know that they're getting it anyway because their people are copying it almost verbatim from um, – you know, in blogs, newspapers, um, you know, reporters. So it's the sixth most viewed uh, website in the world, and we darn well better have a good hold on it. All right, so what inspired you to get started? I, wait, was it just bad experiences on Wikipedia personally? Oh, no. I have been looking for many years of figuring out what I was going to do. I, you know, I'd been to all the lectures. I'd read all the books. I'd seen all the, you know, I, it was my turn to step up and do something. And I, I didn't know what to do. I had gone to a JREF uh, cruise and Tim Farley, one of the people I truly admire uh, in the skeptic community, um, was talking about why it's important to edit Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So I took some notes. I forgot about it for a few weeks, actually a few months. I uploaded a photo and I of Brian Dunning from the Skeptoid podcast. And I said, wow, this is a really awful Wikipedia page. So my picture looks really nice on here. So I better do, uh, and I started fussing with it. And I taught myself how to edit Wikipedia, which is a total shock because I am not a tech person at all. Oh, right on. So you, you didn't have any like blogging or wiki type experience before that? No, I'm a baby photographer. I have no skill whatsoever in technology, nothing, zero, zippo. All right, so let me ask you this. Do we need an, an organized effort for this? Is, is it not enough for skeptics to just be doing this work freelance? Oh, you know, actually, that's a really great question. I don't think I've ever had that before. Freelance editing of Wikipedia is what, of course, most of the editing of Wikipedia is happening. We find, though, that uh, it's a certain personality type, maybe somebody who hasn't been really involved in editing Wikipedia um, before that joins our project. because. Uh, the average Wikipedia editor tends to be somebody doing it isolated. They don't really have a lot of contact with anybody else who's doing it. They're mm -hmm. using people's usernames. They don't know who the other person is. It's um, virtually anonymous. Um, they do the majority of work. There's, I mean, it's mostly in good shape, but um, the pseudoscience topics, not so much. But um, we train, we mentor, we are a community and, you know, we know who, who each other are. We're, a lot of us are friends on Facebook. We go to conferences and we hang out together. We do Google Hangouts. We're more of a social group, but we train each other. We mentor each other uh, before something goes live. You know, it's been viewed by many people's eyes. We, you know, if you have a question or anything like that, we go to each other instead of going to the more anonymous type of Wikipedia. So, no, of course not. Anybody can edit Wikipedia. You don't even need an account. But we're more of a social uh, and uh, more hands-on training, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. I can see why that's very necessary. You know, I had a job once where part of my, uh, one of my responsibilities was to maintain the company Wikipedia page, and I found that very often the people who meant well were as much of a problem as the people who were trying to slander the company or vandalize the page. So are there, like, common mistakes that you find people who are new to editing Wikipedia make? Oh, yes, all the time. In fact, they tend to get um, themselves overwhelmed in uh, trying to do too much. In fact, in the newest Skeptical Inquirer magazine that just came out, I just walked in today and it's already here, I have an article, it's a two-page article on here, that talks about the myths of editing Wikipedia, and if anybody's interested, they can look that up. But it talks about some of the mistakes that people do make, and they try to edit pages on homeopathy or Scientology or Mormonism or that kind of thing, and they find they're over their head right away, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's not a good place to start. You should start off with fixing grammar, fixing spelling, um, you know, go all over the place and fix things. But yeah, and a lot of the vandalism we see is people who are well-intended of sorts, skeptic-type-minded people who are 
making fun of psychics or mm-hmm. things like that. So we have to go in and re- take that off too. But yeah, we we don't usually see a lot of vandalism by people who are the paranormal site type. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, I can understand it because there's there's so much. You know, it can be a little overwhelming to get started on Wikipedia because there's sort of a, a, a language that you have to learn, especially if you have never edited in HTML or anything like that before. Um, and I can see how that seems super intimidating to people. So you go to a page like homeopathy and you're up against a lot of people who have a vested interest in this page versus, you know, a page about Brian Dunning where it's, it's it, you know, it, c- correcting a little grammar isn't going to, you know, call down the thunder on you quite as quick. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, is there a particular type of page that you're focused on or is it just broadly pseudoscience? Well, when we're training people, and I handle all of the training that is done in English, I am focusing on whatever it is that is kind of of interest of that person who's who's training. I give them, um, you know, I, I look and see if they're into podcasts or if they're into um, like the natural sciences, mm-hmm. uh, chemistry, uh, maybe medical quackery is their expertise or something they're very interested in. And I try to pick topics that are more associated with that because I want them to really enjoy the editing that they're doing. But once they finish the training with me, they're able to edit whatever they want. They tend to fall into areas that are, oh, I don't know. I have some people who are just very interested in pages on astronomy. Mm -hmm. And then I have others that are more interested in the medical things. I have uh, a few editors who really like to edit pages for conferences. The, the, whoever's going to be speaking at the next TAM or the next Nexus or something like that, they want to work on those pages. So it's it's all over the board. We have, you know, UFO people. We have climate change. We have all kinds of things. So we're all over, and, and I like it that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, is there like a particular field where maybe you have a dearth of people? Like, is there a particular field of expertise that you're always looking for or anything like that? Um, no, I'm, I'm willing to take anything that I possibly can, um, whatever people feel passionate about. We do seem to have an awful lot of people who are interested in atheism. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we have really completed a lot of pages on, you know, the atheists, the podcasters and things like that. That's has been kind of... Um, Oh, we need to do a lot more, but we have done yeah. quite a bit of work on that already. This show doesn't even have a Wikipedia page yet, so obviously yeah. we're not done just yet. So now, th- this <laughs> is kind of a goofy question, and if you don't have an answer, that's fine. But is there something that stands out in your mind as maybe the silliest bit of pseudoscience that you or somebody uh, working with you has, has ever excised from Wikipedia? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wouldn't even be able to start there so much. But my favorite page is um, Spontaneous Human Combustion uh-huh. because that was – something that frightened me when I was a child. I didn't have the resources of the internet to be able to go and check and find out that that wasn't real. I thought it might be kind of real. Right. So um, we rewrote that Wikipedia page a year or so ago now. I think it's 2013 we finished it. But that was that was fabulous because we completely rewrote it. And that was kind of rewarding to me because I knew that people <laughs> – all over the world are still interested in, right. in spontaneous human combustion. Can you believe it? Well, and then, then and then some some little girl that was going to have the fear that you grew up with yeah. might not have it. Yeah, that's awesome. Mine was yeah. alien abduction. I was terrified when I was growing up that I was going to get abducted by greys or something like that. Oh, wow. Now, is there – have you seen any organization on the other side? Is there like an anti-GSOW that the alt-med woo merchants are setting up that you know of? Oh, my gosh. They've tried. Uh, yeah, uh, Rupert Sheldrick and um, – The dog whisperer, right? On. Yeah. He's really into uh, uh, talking about the gorilla skeptics. He's He's – for at least a year or more, he had – been lecturing using our example he spells my name wrong every time but that's okay he um you know he's i'm on his top 10 list of of the material skeptics to uh i'm there with richard dawkins oh wow you know that's good it's got my picture and everything it's great yeah i'm on the top 10 of people to be the bad the bad people but they they've tried to organize something but they have no um, they they say let's do this and then you know, of course, nobody really answers their call. And they're like, we could do this. And so they were going to try a new Wikipedia. They were going to try to make a new paranormal Wikipedia. And that went exactly nowhere. Yeah, it worked, it worked out well for Conservapedia, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's well, a big joke. Yeah. It's funny that you bring up uh, Sheldrake because I actually have a quote from him right here. I wanted to talk about a few of the criticisms. So I'm going to try to get through this quote with a straight face here. Uh, quote, 
The guerrilla skeptics are well trained, highly motivated, have an ideologically, uh, I'm sorry, an ideological agenda, and operate in teams contrary to Wikipedia rules. The mastermind behind this organization is Susan Gerbic, misspelled, yes. The teams are coordinated through secret Facebook pages. They check the credentials of new recruits to avoid infiltration. Their aim is to control information, and Miss Gerbic glories in the power that she and her warriors wield. End hyperbole. I, I mean, quote. So. <laughs> Now, clearly, there's a lot to unpack there, but I think the only thing of substance is the charge that you operate in teams contrary to Wikipedia's rules. Is that true? Um, no. We do operate with teams, and that's absolutely fine. Um, we have a forum that we uh, we do check people out, make sure that we have people in there who are um, scientifically minded. Yes, mm -hmm. of course, we're, we're, we're a closed forum, and we do discuss everything that we do. And, yeah, that, that part's right, but... It, canvassing is what he's talking about and contrary to wikipedia rules you're not allowed to canvas that means to go and find somebody come over and say hey i need you to help me control this page right here come vote on this topic oh, gotcha. and i want you to vote yes or no on it and and help me get that that's called canvassing that is not okay and we're very careful to avoid that but um talking in a group about editing wikipedia is no more can be controlled than if a bunch of people um, say, hey, they start sharing an email list amongst each other saying, hey, Joe, you know, what do you think? Should we do this? And, you know, right, so right. it happens all the time and it's and we're quite open about it. Mm -hmm. you know, now, so it's no problem. Well, yeah, I mean, I, Wikipedia maintains talk pages for the for the various pages. So um, now do you, in fact, glory in the power that you and your warriors wield? Was another one of the I was just there. glorying. I was just glorying before you you called. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think I'm kind of gloried out for the moment. My my happiness is at its you know 100 percent or 110 percent right now. Yeah, I've been glorying. My hair has turned gold. And oh, you know. right on, right on. Like Goku, that's awesome. So uh, when you become a mastermind, I think that comes with a secret hideout. But I can understand if you don't want to comment on that. Um, well, yes. So now, as far as you know, is uh, Wikipedia aware of what you're doing? Yes. Uh, Wikipedia is a we, not a they. Right. Uh -huh. So, yeah, as you know, you've edited Wikipedia before. So there is no real them to approve or disprove of us. But the editors that we've run into, for the most part, have always supported us. And when we've been brought up in a, a talk conversation, um, they've always said, oh, you mean well-trained editors <laughs> who believe that citations are a good thing? Uh, more of them? Oh, gee, maybe we should, you know. Yeah, of course, they they uh, are aware of us, and um, yeah, they're they're supportive, and we are just amongst them as far as mm -hmm. except for training and having a, a private forum. There's really not much difference between us and and the normal Wikipedia editor. All right, so let's get to the part of the interview. I'm sure everybody's waiting for how they can get involved. Um, <sighs> oh yeah. Uh huh. So if I want to help out, what what is step one? Step one is to go to the YouTube channel for GSOW, and we have many interviews that I've done of my editors, and there are some other things that explain the project on there. But what we want you to do is to listen to the interviews and to make sure that this is the right project for you, because this is the training itself takes months, mm -hmm. and it is not something that to just jump into because you have nothing to do for a few weeks. This is something that once you're trained, we're going to expect you to do this for probably years. Fixing Wikipedia and repairing these pages is something that, oh my gosh, it's so meaningful, it's so important, and there's so much work to be done. And I'm sure it's like cleaning up a mess. As soon as you get it done, you've got to well, go back and clean up a little more. Uh, not really. Most of the pages that we have done have stayed in really good shape, and really? that's because yeah, I haven't. We haven't had hardly any uh, pages that we've had to go back in and and fix. You know, like spontaneous human combustion. That's almost exactly the way it was when we wrote it in 2013. It's very little has changed because we we go over it very carefully and we're critical of what we put on there. There's no worse critic than the person. Um, somebody else on our team that will just analyze it to pieces. I mean, we're skeptical. Well, yeah, right, right. It's what we so do. So we're going to analyze it. Yeah, and we're like, do you have a citation for that? I don't like that citation. I think you need to find a better citation for it. Okay, take it out. Because, you know, <laughs> so for the most part, what we do stays. Right on. And so we train, we train people how to do that. That's another reason why they want to come to GSOW for training, because we're, 
we're going to train you how to do it right. And, you know, your edits are going to stick. We hear from people all the time who say that they've, they are just, you know, they've tried making edits and they didn't stick and, you know, mm. and they got frustrated and somebody got angry at them. And it's like, you know what, that, and you, it was probably justified. You probably were doing something wrong. You know, come to us, we'll show you what to do and how to do it right. Yeah, that was certainly my experience. And, and it's funny when you, when you jump into something like that and the immediate response is for the community to turn against you, it's very easy to just throw in the towel and say, never mind. So oh, I, yeah. it's really awesome that you guys are doing what you're doing. Uh, now, I, I only have you for a couple more minutes, and there's one more topic that I'd love for you to address if you could, uh, because I use Wikipedia a lot in my job researching for this show and the other shows that we do, and I'm sure that many of our listeners are in the same position. So could you offer us some like, best practices if and when we're using Wikipedia for research? Well, I would suggest that Wikipedia over, overall is probably in really pretty good shape, especially the things that are science-related, you know, like the uh, chemical compound for measles or something like that. Yeah. I'm sure those are probably pretty good. What I would do is always go to the bottom of the page and look at the citations and then get your information from the citation itself, the footnote. So that would be something I would definitely make sure you look at and treat the Wikipedia page as an overview of the topic. The next thing you might want to do is go to the talk page, which is a tab that's on the left-hand side of your Wikipedia page, which most of the listeners probably have never even noticed before. But if you click on the talk page, you will see that's where editors are having discussions with each other about what to put on the page, how to improve the page, you know, what's going to not be on the page. And you can see really well, um, especially controversial issues, you can see exactly what the mindset is of how that page is written. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, another great thing I should point out is that if there's anything happening in the world right now, any breaking news that happens, uh, you know, a bombing or anything like that, the best source you can get your information from is not the news so much as Wikipedia. Because when the event is unfolding, there are people on Wikipedia who are dedicated to keeping it updated, and they're very tight about their sources. They don't allow rumor. They don't allow um, opinion or gossip. They are – it's like it's not going to make it to the page unless it is, you know, a, second, a strong secondary source from some reputable place. And then as soon as it's – if that is changed or something's updated, they're on it with a new update. Mm -hmm. This isn't my team doing this. This is just a general – people in Wikipedia. And if you look at the talk page again, you'll see them saying, well, this hasn't been substantiated. What do we have for that citation? They're like, well, this is what's being reported by such and such, but I'm not really sure about it. I'm not comfortable putting it on the page yet. And they're like, okay, you know, so check out the, the talk page, mm -hmm. check out the citations and, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but for the most part, it's probably pretty good. Yeah, I think Wikipedia gets a lot of, uh, 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 is, is dismissed far too easily by way too many people. It is, you know, because CNN is not going to be updating their stories as quickly as the volunteer uh, teams on, on Wikipedia. That's, that's actually very good advice. I appreciate that. Well, I think James Randi taught us long ago that we can't sink the rubber ducky, so I feel like we owe a huge debt of gratitude to people like yourself who at least push them back down whenever they pop up. So <laughs> on behalf of myself, our audience, and everybody who ever looked on Wikipedia and said, wait a minute, that's what homeopathic means? I want to offer our thanks. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And, of course, if anybody wants to learn more about the GSOW, we'll link to uh, more information on the show notes, including those YouTube interviews. Uh, that's uh, episode 132, and you'll find those show notes at scathingatheist.com. Susan, thanks again for your time. Thank you so much, Noah.